What's going on, y'all? Welcome back. It's Oz. Let's get productive. So, one of the things I really love about having this channel and kicking it with you guys and doing these reviews every week is that I'm able to discuss products that may or may not have even existed if technology had an advanced software to the point it is today. Software is just pretty much put creativity right at your fingertips. So developers are really pushing the envelope and they're coming up with so many new cool concepts. And that brings me to the VST that I wanna to discuss today, which is a VST called Glass by Merce Instruments. Now this VST kind of takes a very common idea like synthesizers and you know cool pads, but it does it in a very unique creative way. And we're gonna discuss that unique creative way right now so let's not waste any time and let's jump right into this vst glass by merce instruments let's do it so right now i have logic queued up and we're gonna go right over the contact and bring up the instrument glass as you can see right here this is glass now glass consists of four different instruments and each of these instruments have 16 different layers of textures and different ways you can tweak those textures to actually change the instrument itself. So it could be one instrument, but the way you tweak it and the way you play with these 16 different layers, it can take one sound and make it sound like 30 different sounds. Now the four instruments are glitch, resonance, swell, and tape. We're going to start with glitch. Now this is glitch. Just to dive into what the differences are between glitch, resonance, swell, and tape. Glitch utilizes weird and kind of really cool mangled sounding instruments, right? Tape delves into analog tape delay processing through like monitor and rolling space echoes. So it has that analog feel and it's a really cool sounding thing. Swell really catches an acoustic sound that evolves. It's kind of like um, acoustic sounding pads and resonance imitates and builds on that vibrating resonant nature of abstract objects. So like tubes and drum skins and strings, um, it builds on that. So you have these four different instruments and we're gonna go through all four of these instruments, but we're gonna start with glitch. So right off the back, this is the UI. Really minimal looking UI. I love minimal looking instruments, really clean looking, really futuristic looking. Now, as you're looking at this, you can already see that this doesn't exactly look like your typical VST. And that's really dope right off the back. I love that. But because it's a little bit different, it might take a little bit of getting used to to understand really what it is that you're trying to do. So just to go over the UI a little bit and what it is you're looking at when you're working on this glass instrument. Um, you have four different layers here and in each of these four different layers, you have four different ways to process that layer. So this first top layer up here, we'll call it uh, bank a bank a is dedicated to your bass and your least synth sounds bank B, which is the second layer right down here is dedicated to like what your primary sound is going to be. So the sound that's going to be the brightest a uh, part of your sound construction. Bank C and bank D, those are both like textures. So different textures, they're not super musical, but there's something to add underneath bank A and bank B to kind of take your sound to another level. And you're able to create your sound by clicking on each of these different boxes here and tweaking the sound that's dedicated to those individual boxes. If you look right here, you have volume, you have pan, you have attack and you have release. And you'll notice on each of these layers, you have a volume pan, attack and release. So you can adjust your volume, your pan, your attack and your release for each of these individual layers. If you click on the left side of the volume knobs over here, you click on the left side, whichever layer is highlighted, that's the layer that you're operating on. If you look right down here, you see that you have high pass and low pass filters and you can click on them and it'll reveal different modulation options for your high pass and low pass filters. And that's really cool. This stuff can be adjusted for each one of these individual layers. So no matter what layer you on, you can go to the high pass and low pass options and you can make your adjustments for each of those individual layers. Right here is your saturation. Right here is your phase knob. 
your stereo, your room knob, and your blur knob. Now, that's it. Very minimal, very straightforward, very simple to understand. And as simple as that thing is to understand, it's really cool once you get started. If you go up to the top here, you do have some presets of different sounds. So you have cavernous. And as you can hear with the sounds that are playing, it's not just a straightforward pad. There's layers underneath it of textures and different things to really expand uh, that synthesized sound. And we're going to dive into how you can adjust those layers and how you can take a sound and turn it into a completely different sound, which is one of the things I really love about this VST is that it doesn't matter what the presets are. It doesn't even matter that there's only four different sounds. You can tweak those sounds so much that you make your own thing. You will really have pads and synths that don't sound like any other pad and any other synth on any other VST. So I'm just going through the presets right now just to show, give you an idea of what some of these sounds and the uh, glitch instrument sounds like. So as you can hear, that's a little bit distorted. You go to the next one, you have evolving echoes. And the really cool thing about these instruments is what you're listening to right now is the same instrument being used with different layers of textures underneath it. This is called fifths. Really beautiful sounding. Let's go back, let's go back to fifths so we can discuss what we're seeing here in the UI. We can discuss what we're looking at by also going through the instrument itself. Now, like I said, you have 16 different variations of textures that you could add to the four layers of sounds within this one instrument. I know that sounds a little bit complex, but I'm gonna show you visually what it is I'm talking about. I mean, I could sit here and talk your ears off about what it is that you're seeing in the UI here, but I'm gonna just show you what I'm talking about. So essentially these are four different layers right here. You have layer one, you click here, you have layer two, you click here, you have layer three, you click here, you have layer four. And on each of these four layers, you have four different variations of that texture to your glitch sound, right? So you can adjust the volume of each of those layers right here at this first circle right here you can pan each of those layers individually right here with the circle here your attack is right here and your release is right here and every single one of these layers has it so you can adjust each of them different just to show you the different layers if you want to go through each of these square boxes right here and see how that changes the sound on that texture or that layer um, you can turn the volume down of each of these other layers down here and just let that one layer play. So right now we're right up top here and you'll see if I click a different box, it slightly changes. If I click this box, it slightly changes. So one way, and if I click that one, it slightly changes. So one way to build the sound that you're looking for within this glitch instrument and we're going to go through the other instruments in a second but one way to, to build the sound is to turn the volume down on each of these layers and really take your time and listen to the instrument of each one of these layers and see what sounds good together the way i would start is i would go to all of the layers and turn the volume down except for the volume on e on the layer that I want to start off with. So the only thing you're going to hear is this top layer right here. And I would go through each of these four boxes until I hear something that sounds good to me. I'm going to
So let's 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 take let's take this one. Right? I like how that sounds. Cool. Then I would go to the next layer underneath and I would turn that volume up and listen to that one. And then maybe I would start to slowly blend in that first layer and this second layer and hear how they sound together. Let's go over here. I like how that sounds. So I'm gonna turn the volume down just a little bit on this second layer to blend it a little bit better. That wide pulsating pad soundscape on that second layer. That sounds perfect. And maybe I wanna pan that to the left a little bit just so it has its own space in the stereo field. That's cool. And you can maybe even change the attack on that top layer right there. So, so it doesn't hit so abruptly. There we go, so it kinda Nice, 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 nice. Then I will go down here and listen to these and see how these sound. It's a little bit of distortion. Okay, gives you the fifths right there. Now that has a bit of a, a the, the frequencies on that one is a little bit higher. So maybe I would leave that and just turn it down just so it peeks through the sound slightly. Just so there's a hint of that high frequency uh, pad right here. So I'm gonna turn the volume up a little bit more. Maybe leave it right here. Pan that one to the right a little bit. Turn the volume down a little bit more. Right. Go down to this bottom layer. Hear how that sounds. And this is really textures right here. This is really... Turn the volume up even more. So you can really hear. Get a bit of grit going on down in there. I don't think that's too much. This is fine. Perfect. So now once I have, I've just built my sound. This is my sound. And once I've built my sound, I can then go in and start to really tweak things the way I want. So I might go back up here to that first top layer, the shape. Sign. can hear you can really take these sounds to another level I mean this is one sound and what we're doing to this one sound is turning it into a completely different sound and I'll play the before and after I'll play to you what this sound originally sounded like versus what I did with it Remember like that And you got a whole sound there. And if so, this is what the sound sounds like right now that I just created. And this is what the sound sounded like before. So as you can hear, it's a completely different sound made with the same sound that's just on this one instrument you know you could get rid of this instrument you can go down the tape which is a bit more analog and 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 a bit more you know distort the sounds in that is a bit more distorted uh let's let's mess around with that one let's mess with some of the presets in that one
get some real lo-fi vibes with this one. Right? Really cool broken loop tape, degraded keys. So anyone out there making lo-fi beats and you really you need a real ominous sounding piano that already comes with the grit and the hiss from the tape, the an that analog sound. Really cool sounding stuff, man. Like really cool sounding stuff. And and that's what makes this stand out so much is that this is a preset. And even as dope as this preset sounds, I could still go back through this and make my adjustments and completely change the sound of it. Just that one click on a different box gave that piano more bass. I can make changes down here. Now sounds like there's a bit of water dripping in the sound. We're gonna pick this one here. It's, it's just really cool when you can take such a simple concept and expand that concept to give you endless possibilities. Endless possibilities is the game. I have been using this a lot in my production lately. Not, not so much for the main melody in my beats, but definitely for stuff in the background of my chorus and my hook sections, definitely for transitions, definitely for intros uh, to intros to my beats, um, definitely uh, for bridges to make a melody that's simple, have a bit more warmth to it and a bit more body. I'll add some layers of this underneath it. So uh, yeah, let's not even waste any more time. Let's just jump in to the cook up. Let's get to the cook up. Let's make a beat with this thing and see what this thing can really do. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to, go back to glass. I already found the sound that I liked in this thing and I already tweaked it. So that's the sound that we're going to start off with. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this plug in here called Chord Jam so I can turn it into a chord. We're going to record this. It's that simple. See, that's that's the cool thing about this this VST is that the sounds are so different that you don't have to do too much melody wise that it kind of shines on its own. It's like if you have like a really basic outfit and then you throw a crazy big ass diamond chain around your neck and a Rolex on your wrist your outfit could be simple as hell you know what I'm saying you could have a white t-shirt and some denim jeans if you got a Rolex on your wrist and that's kind of like how this VST feels like when you go through some of the sounds they're so expansive and they're so uh there's so much texture in the sound that you don't have to do too much. You know what I'm saying? So it's really cool. All right, and let's add an, another track here. Call this one track two. 
Uh, let's see what we got here. All right, track two. And then for this one, we're going to go to the tape. Let's do tape. Let's see. Let's go to the next one. I love this piano. We're going to add that to the background. That's it. Let's quantize that. Quantize that melody right there. So I have my root melody right here, which is this. And then I have the, the, the layer underneath it, which is the chord. That shit already sound fire to me. Like, I'm gonna just add some drums to that. I don't even really wanna add too much. Matter of fact, uh, let's see, let's see we add some like, a little bit more to the melody something because this this has a lot this has a bit of a lo-fi vibe to it um it's kind of dark sounding let's see if we can add something to those higher frequencies to kind of brighten this up a little bit make another track call this one track three okay and let's see what we can do here so for this part of the melody we're going to go to virtual realm vst because i like their keys and as far as the glass VST goes, like I said before, it 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 uh it shines in the pads department. Like that's what it's for. Expansive, wide, stereo sounding synth pads that you can manipulate and and do a lot with that. But right now I want like a bit of a, a piano sound, so I'm gonna go to a different VST for that. Um we're gonna do the virtual realm VST. I love how that keys sound already. Right here, okay. I like that. Let's do that. I didn't like how that came out, but let's quantize that. I'm going to turn these into waves. Bounce this in place just in case I want to manipulate the wave file a little bit. Now mute that and let's play this back. Ah, uh, shit sounds crazy. All right, now let's add some drums to that. And let's see what we can do here with the drums. Let's add another track. We'll call that track four. Boom, 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 boom. So first, I'm going to copy and paste this because I want the track to start after eight bars. I uh, went to the Henson VST, got the uh, went to the drum bank in there. Let's add this. Nah, I don't want those, those little guitar sounds in there, those keys in there. Just 
want the melody. the track all right uh, these hi-hats in here do that again copy and paste that boom 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 Wow, perfect. Next track, throw these toms in here, these little taps. that all right we can throw the percussion in there let's throw this percussion Clap in there. Oh. I'll throw that underneath the uh, snare just to beef it up a little bit more. All right, so we can go into Hensive and look up some guitars. So I put something together really quickly. Um, I took some of the sounds from glass and added some chords to it. Let's get glass back on the screen here. Let's get glass right there, boom. So I took some of the sounds from there, added some chords to it, added some guitars and things in the background, um, added some drums to this. And just to give you an idea of something you can create with glass, um, here's a beat that I just did with glass.
And that's my beat with glass. As you was able to hear in the beat, man, it's really great to, uh, this is a really great VST if you're trying to layer up sounds underneath a melody you have to kind of make it a little bit uh, warmer, make it sound a little bit fuller, you know, more spacious. You know, the sounds in this VST is pretty, pretty uh, creative, very different. And um, I'm really digging this thing. Um, it has a lot of potential for sound design and for you to uh, really, you can sit here for a long time just creating sounds, just coming up with new ideas for sounds, which would inspire new ideas for beats. And it's really cool. I like the UI. I like how simple the design is. And it's, it's, it's very user friendly and it's pretty fun. You know, the colors and everything. It's a really cool VST. The only problem I have, this is the only problem I have with the instrument. And you know, I gotta keep it real. Because it's a very specific instrument that does a very specific thing, I feel like the price is a little bit too high. I think right now it's like 79 euro, which is like almost a hundred dollars. It's a great instrument, but it's just, I feel like at a hundred dollars, it feels a little bit expensive, but like I said, it is a really good instrument. Um, so I really think it's 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 really all gonna come down to what it is you're looking for. If you are looking for something that is going to take your production in a in a more creative direction, something a little bit different. If you're looking to have sounds that you feel like nobody else is gonna have, this is perfect for you because you can create your own thing. If you're doing um, electronic music, if you're doing trap soul type of beats, um, this is perfect for that. So yeah, shout out to Merce Instruments. Glass is a really dope VST. I'm glad I got my hands on it. I'm definitely gonna be creating some really creative, different sounding trap beats. I'm gonna try to implement this in as many trap beats as possible um, to try to get people in their feelings. Yeah, this, is, this is a VST to get you in your feelings. This, like the sounds feel like feelings. That's what it's all about. So yeah, as always, thank you guys for stopping by. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you can be notified anytime I drop a new video. I have a lot of cool stuff in store, a lot of tutorials on the way, really dope things. I love kicking it with you guys and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.